And welcome into Gator Bites on the 1010XL.com podcast network. Also being simulcast on the Florida Gator 1010XL Facebook page. Today's Gator podcast is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialist, the Northeast Florida's leading orthopedic center, providing an unparalleled level of care across numerous locations in both Jacksonville and St. Augustine. That includes Riverside, Northside, the Southside, the Beaches, Fleming Island, and St. John's. He is Denny Thompson. I'm the hacker, Ryan Green, and we got a big one in the swamp tomorrow night as McNeese State rolls in for a Saturday evening. What would you call him? It's a big one. Oh, no, 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 no. Say the name of the school again. It's McNeese, right? McNeese, as in like knees? Oh, no. How do you you pronounce it? McNeese. McNeese. Okay, well, there you go. (laughs) You got McNeese, <laughs> Nice, McNeese State. Uh, the big, the big atmosphere, though. I'll tell you this: I don't particularly care about much about the game. It's a complete waste of time. Wow! But the LED lighting should be mm. a lot of fun in the swamp tomorrow night. Sold Apparently, out, that's huh? making their debut. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a couple years behind, but yeah, yeah. No, nah, you gotta, you gotta follow in some footsteps of Georgia I mean, it is and a Alabama. Cool fan experience, though. Yeah. Have you been to a game that that they've done? Like, I you have to a Georgia or Alabama game. It actually really is cool. It, it it sounds a little corny, but it's not. It's well, a great atmosphere. And the reason I say, I mean, a waste of time might have been strong, but the reason I'm I'm saying that, who did McNeese lose to last week? Tarleton Tar- State, Tarleton, the Division Two powerhouse. Tarleton yeah, State? Tarleton State beat McNeese State over uh, <laughs> last weekend. So again, this is a get right game for the Gators. It's a paycheck game. We understand that, but good heavens, what a terrible opponent. Well, hold on now. You can't have it both ways. Last week, you said they played too good of a team. Well, no. If you play Ball State, Miami of Ohio, La Monroe, Toledo, Akron, any group of five, Max, Sunbelt, American team, I would be fine with that. I, I don't know why you have to schedule so far wait, wait, down. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. First off, McNeese State. May not be very good this year, but they they're not a bad program. Like they're in Lake Charles, Louisiana. The reason why that's the reason I know them. They're I'm not from a, there. They're not at Division One. I team. understand that. I understand that. But it's this game. Who was when was it scheduled? It could have been during that whole like we're paying you phase that everybody went through. Yeah, right. We're paying you to come take this L. I'm sure when they scheduled Utah, they thought they'd be coming home with a victory, and so all right, it's our first game of the swamp. They're going to sell it out anyway. Let's just pay and win. Right. So, I mean, I understand it, but I think the bigger picture in this whole thing is it may be exactly what they need right now, because this may be like a and this is going to be like locker room fodder for McNeese, but it may be a glorified walkthrough for them where they make sure that they know how to line up and they know how to go on the snap count and they get in and out of huddles and they don't have two number threes on the field and everybody's lined up properly on defense like this may be exactly what Florida needs right now. And I'm sure McNeese is going to put that on their bulletin board. Yeah, that's Denny fine. Thompson is saying, you know, so and so. Look. Well, I mean, I'm sure they're that's already on their bulletin board. Yes. Now, I mean, that's I, I, they understand that and the, and there's those kids are going to play with emotion for about the first 4 minutes before they realize, wow, these guys are a little bit bigger and faster than we are. And well, I'm looking, I don't even see a line for this game. Maybe when you don't play a 1AA team, maybe they don't yeah, put I a don't line know. on it because there's not a line for LSU and Grambling either which is also a terrible game. Pack showing his age there with a one double A. Well, one double A, yeah. Well, what is it, FCS versus yeah. FBS? The bottom line is this. It's not a great opponent, but it's like you said, it's what Florida may need. So let's dive in. What do you need to see from the Gators tomorrow night on the field? We will begin with the quarterback, Graham Mertz. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's anything Graham can show. I mean, Graham got put into the fire, and he was fine. He wasn't spectacular. He wasn't bad he was fine he wasn't the reason Florida lost that football game right so I I don't know that I'm looking for a ton out of Graham other than let's just make sure everybody's lined up right and I know that sounds so basic but guys there's a lot of formations there's a lot of shifts there's a lot of movements let's let's get into a fluidity with that as an offense let's make sure that we have progressed from week one to week two with that right and that's where you get the most progression from and then just manage let's let's make sure he's getting Box counts right. Let's make sure that he's getting us into protections that are good. And and technically, most protections should be good because if you're big on big, you probably are just better than they are. But I don't think if you're Napier, that's necessarily what you want to do. You you want to go normal flow of a game and have your quarterback making the right checks and making the right reads. And that's I think that's all you're looking for out of Graham Mertz. And don't turn it over. 
Right. Right. If you if you do those things, good. Let's move on and get back to who you're supposed to be. Montreal Johnson carried the ball three times yeah. in Salt Lake City. That's preposterous. Go out there, establish Johnson and ETN in that running game. Maybe work Trey on Webb in a little bit. Get that offensive line some confidence and run the ball down their throat. Yeah, that's the interesting thing because the way you said that was my assumption last week of who you're supposed to be. But, man, it didn't look like they were trying to be that mm -hmm. at all. Unless they thought they couldn't run on Utah, which I don't know. They were proven to be right, by the way, if that was what they thought. Well, do I mean, is there a – I don't know this, but is there, you know – Offensive line issues that we are unaware of. Yeah, I got one for you. The right tackle. But do you understand? Like, I'm talking about preseason. Okay. But, but before we ever knew anything, yeah. did they know something that they're like, yeah, I know that we're supposed to be run, 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 but we may not be able to do that. That may not be our personnel setting. I don't know. I don't know. But I agree with you. I think whatever your identity is, your fan base should be able to see that this game. So if your identity really is to surprise all of us and spread it out, and throw it 40 times a game, then then that's what I want to see. But if your identity is what we all think it is, 12 personnel, um, run between the tackles, a little outside stretch, stuff like that, then I also want to see that as well. You know, you go into the transfer portal and you get guys out of the transfer portal, and some teams in the state are kings of the transfer portal. We'll get to them in a moment. And Florida goes and gets guys that just don't look the part. And I think, I mean, not to disparage the young man, or and he's, I'm not – I really don't want to single him out. There were a lot of guys like this, but when you transfer out of Alabama, there's probably a reason that Alabama lets you transfer out of there, right? And and he comes to Florida, Damian George, and that was bad last week. So hopefully we see some improvement on the right side of that line. Yeah, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. I mean, it, it's – listen, it's weird. It, and not to turn this into an anti-Gator podcast, but it's relevant. I had a conversation with Carson Beck last week, the Georgia quarterback, I was in Athens, um, and we were sitting down to dinner one night, and he was like, <clears throat> this is the first game I've started since November 8th, 2019. Wow. And last you, game at Mandarin. Right, yeah. right. So maybe that's the situation with this guy, right? Like, that's the first significant big-time live action he's gotten in two, three years, and he just needs to get his feet back under. And so I'm going to give guys like that the benefit of the doubt, because if you're starting at the University of Florida and you signed at Alabama, you're obviously a pretty good ball player. So I, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt until you show me otherwise. But but if yeah, if he has a bad game against me, state, then certainly uh, quickly to the defense. I thought last week, I know we talked about this last Friday after the 70 yard bomb that Utah had hit to open the game. I was fine with the Gator defense. I mean, you're on the road against a top 15 team, understanding their quarterbacks out. I get that. But you allow 17 points in 58 minutes. I'm fine with that. Yeah. So I'd like to see the defense continue to look like they did last week. We didn't talk about this last week, but the genius that was that first play call by Utah. And that's seven of those points, right? Like, you take that away, they played excellent. We got our backup quarterback in. Like, we're in this formation that obviously we're going to run the ball. Oh, here you go. Here's the deep post. It was a great throw, I, too. I mean, it, it was a great throw, but just the call, right? Just the call to say, we know that they're coming straight downhill at the run. So I don't even put that – like, you got to execute that on def defense. <clears throat> but you take that play away, and, man, they really did play well, and they were physical. They were super physical. So, you know, I don't know how you play Mitney State. I don't know. Do you not blitz and work on things, or do you stay with who you are my gut is that's what they're going to do. So, all right, I, I want to get to a comparison. I want to get your thoughts on it. First, let me tell you about Southeast Orthopedic Specialist. For the highest quality care, you can rely on Southeast Orthopedic Specialist for any orthopedic injury or concern. You can log on to their website by going to se-ortho.com, and you can listen for Southeast Orthopedic Specialist, the good doctor, Kevin Murphy, on Thursday mornings in the 7 o'clock hour with Jeff and Dan right here on 1010XL for his weekly analysis of injuries in sports. So last Thursday, by no means was it rock bottom for Florida, but there were some very embarrassing moments. The two number threes on the field at the same time, not being able to line up properly, countless false starts. I mean, it was bad against Utah. So I got to thinking, once watching Florida State in Orlando just completely destroy LSU in the second half. 
Rewind the clock back two years. It'll actually be two years on Monday. Unfortunate date. It was September 11th, but it was September 11th of 2021. Do you, Denny Thompson, know what happened with Florida State football on September 11th, 2021? Yeah, I don't remember the team, but they got, was it Jacksonville State? That was the Jacksonville yeah. State 60-yarder to beat them on the final play of the game where Florida State literally blew a coverage and let Jacksonville State get behind them to score a 60-yard touchdown as time expires. Fast forward two years later, from that utter embarrassment at home in a half-empty stadium to destroying LSU on national television. Puts the onus on Napier, right? I mean, if Florida State can go from that in 2021 to where they are now in 2023, it's completely night and day. Florida fans see that. Media, like myself, sees that. All right. They did it in two years. Let's go, Florida. Hey, you're saying a lot with this, though, because what happened the week before that? Do you remember? They almost beat Notre Dame. Right. I, yeah. yeah, I was at that game, and it was like, oh, crap, Florida State could be pretty good, right? I think there's such a, like, you just said, I'm not saying this is the lowest of the lows. We're not rock bottom. You better be. This better be rock bottom. Because rock bottom, if it's not, means you're going to lose to a Jacksonville State or something like well, that. I'm talking about like when what, four and eight, when Florida went four and eight with Muschamp. That was probably like rock bottom, right? Yeah, I'm talking about for for Billy Napier. Like what you're hoping is this is rock bottom. Yeah, right. Like now we have to start that come up. But I, I think the reason I said you're saying a lot is I, I think there's a lot to learn from that. It is in today's day and age, and and we just saw Dion do it like that. Although we don't know. That was one game, yeah. right? But if you can stick with a coach and you can let him with today's transfer portal and you you deem him to be competent and able at that level, if you can just stick with him, then the years fly by. And next thing you know, you've got a guy who's made all the mistakes and now you're benefiting from that wisdom that he's gotten from those first couple of years. Because there's one thing that I've always said about Mike Norvell. He's as passionate of a human being as I know. And I know I know Mike fairly well. I think Napier's cut from that same cloth, just he doesn't react the same way. He's like super organized guy. I can assure you that what we're talking about, he's well aware of, and he knows this better be rock bottom, and he better start that ascent coming up. And if he does, Florida fans, like I, I think you got your long-term guy there. All right. Not to turn this into Seminole Bites. This is the Gator Bites podcast. Well, it's a good comparable right now. How did Florida State do that in two years? Jacksonville State scored on a 60-yard play to end the game. It was horrific defense, and here we are two years later, and they're a top-five team in America. The answer's boring, but it's true. It's stacking those day-to-days. That's what I'm talking about. It's having those same voices and being able for your players to play fast because they know what's being done. They're not, there's not constant changes, but it's that, that coach that has that drive of, I believe so firmly in what I'm doing, that every single day we're going to stack minimal gains. And then two years later, you look up and that's 700 something days. And you're like, whoa, whoa, this has really gotten somewhere. And then the guys start to buy in. And that's the thing. When you start to talk about transfer portal, transfer portal, all these guys know each other. So if Joe Blow hits the transfer portal and he knows four guys at Florida State who reach out to him and go, yo, this is the place to come. And here are the reasons why. That is a huge leg up. Mm -hmm. You don't get that when you're flipping coaches, right? So hats off to Florida State. They, they identified that Taggart wasn't the guy. And then when it looked like they had just done it again with Norvell, they're like, no, this guy's staying true to what he's doing. Let's hang on. And now it looks like it's going to pay off. Now they lose a lot this year. So that'll be a big test. But I think there's a lesson to be learned in both of those, both Taggart and Norvell for Florida fans. If you have a couple more games where you're lining off wrong and you've got two number threes and you got – that may not be your guy. But as long as you're seeing progression and this guy believes in what he believes in and he's staying true to what he wants to do, like, hang on. I think that's the mindset Florida fans need to have. And I think some will have that. Some obviously will not. But the ones that are realistic, wins are great, losses stink. But like you said – do wins and losses necessarily matter this year after you get to the two or three loss mark? After you're not going to win the title, you're not going to go to the playoff, which will happen probably in the next couple of weeks. After that, it is about progression. It is about getting better. As much as you don't want to say that, that is what 2023 is about. 
Yeah, I mean, the wins and losses do matter because I think that does affect. Like, you, it's hard to grow as a team when you're getting beat every week. So, I mean, I, I think you need to have an improvement over last year for the guys to continue to believe, right, that, hey, we're working towards something. Um, and also to hold this recruiting class. So I, I do think that that matters, but, I, but you're right. I, I want to see a Florida team that is better when they play Florida State than they are right now or even two weeks from now. Mm-hmm. Like that, I think that's the most important thing because there's a lot of rocky roads between now and Florida State. Are you able to keep them on that same trajectory where they start to lose a little bit of ground with these loss? If you can come out of this season, I still think 7-5 and five is realistic. I really do. I believe that. You see seven wins on that schedule. Yeah, and I don't see seven wins, no. But I think they there's seven games they can win. Yeah. Right? So I still think that that's realistic, and I think you continue to just build towards that. Yeah, that's the hope. I mean, I you go back last week, and we'll preview some of the games tomorrow. Like Arkansas, people were penciling Arkansas in for a W. I don't know about that. K.J. Jefferson's a dude, man. Well, I mean, I, that's the reality. I don't know that you can pencil anybody in for a W right Well, you now. can pick pencil, what was it, McNeese? Yeah, well, I mean, SEC. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, uh, you know what? It's interesting. I would have said Vanderbilt. I'm not so sure about that either. I expect Florida to beat Vanderbilt. Vandy's got a really interesting game tomorrow against Wake Forest. We'll get to in a moment. All right, before we look at tomorrow's slate around the Southeastern Conference, I don't really want to waste time on a prediction tomorrow night. Uh, If Florida loses, that will be rock bottom (laughs) for the history of the program tomorrow. That will be the, I mean, don't give me Georgia Southern. All right. Georgia Southern was a good one double a team. McNeese is not, um, what what do you what do you hope happens? You did it again. What what, what is Mc, the McNeese? I don't know. I don't know. This, well, I'll just I'll like, just call them their opponent. Yeah, like, is, it, is it like Mick K K K N E E S? Yeah, I, McNeese. Mc, I'll just do it with a high McNeese High School. McNeese High School. All right. So, what are you hoping to see Dang, tomorrow? And then he called him a high school. No, that's what I'm gonna. That's how we'll remember them. <laughs> Oh, Nice High School here These in town. These are our people, man. Yeah, well, that's good. You almost went there, apparently. Yes. Right? All right, good. They would, probably would have been better off if you would have gone there. <laughs> um, so what are you hoping to see tomorrow night? Just organization. Just organization and impose your will early. Right? Get. Let's go in. Don't, don't make it to where it's like one of these end of the first quarter. Like you feel like Florida's under control, but my gosh, it's seven to three. You know, something like that. Let's, let's end that first quarter up 14-0. Let's get to halftime up 28-3, right? Impose your will on a team you should impose your will on and then just play mistake-free football. And I don't mean like fumbles and interceptions. I mean line up, right? How on earth? Have did, 11 people. How court. did this game end up on ESPNU, by the way? Is that what it's on? It's, on, it's actually on TV tomorrow. Yeah, I can't keep track with all this, man. I, I, Georgia, the defending national champions last week, were on ESPN+. Plus. Yeah. Yeah. But this game's on ESPN. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, Middle Tennessee, Missouri, to me, is a much Much better better. game. And that's on that's on ESPN plus tomorrow. Yeah. Where Florida and um McNeese. Sure. Are on ESPNU. I I don't I don't get it. But anyway, all right, I digress. (laughs) Uh, Do you have any nieces or nephews? Uh have you heard of nieces and nephews? Yes, I have yes, I have them. Niece. McNeese. Yeah, just say it like that. That's closer, right? Right, Graham, is that acceptable? It's not a difficult it's not. It's interesting. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's like I, I got to watch. I was up <laughs> Tar- late last night watching the Chiefs Lions. Tarleton State you? gave you no trouble. Tar- is it Tarleton State? We weren't sure about that. I think it is. Okay, yeah, right. So. Well, there you go. I'm pretty sure I've heard it. It was a heck of a Tarleton. game last week between Tarleton State and McNeese State. All right. So, <laughs> and I did not do it again. It's McNeese State. All right. Hold on. Let's roll with digress. He's been doing this all week on radio, too, I bet. I have, yeah. <laughs> Southeast Orthopedic Specialists, they bring you Gator Bites. They're Northeast Florida's leading orthopedic center, providing an unparalleled level of care across numerous locations in both Jacksonville and St. Augustine. That includes Riverside, Northside, the South Side. The beaches, Fleming Island, and St. John's. Before we get to the SEC slate, real quick, 8.30 tomorrow night. 8.30 for Florida State Southern Miss in Tallahassee. Really? An 8.30 kick on the ACC network. If you're a Seminole fan that doesn't live in Tallahassee, I mean, Seminole fans in Orlando and Tampa aren't going to make that trip for an 8.30 kick. That game won't get over until midnight. Southern Miss is not terrible. Florida State is on cloud nine. Is that game interesting for a half, you think? No. Not at all? Mm-mm. Okay. No, I, I think Florida State has turned that corner. Yeah, I, I just I, – it's a weird time. I don't think the stadium no, will be full. You. Oh, I they're think com- it will be packed. 
At 8.30 at yeah. night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. It may not be to start the second half, but I— It's their home opener. It's, like, yeah. the most exciting season I do. I, I hear you. I, if you live in Tallahassee, you'll go. Seminole fans up, Seminole fans in Jacksonville, I doubt, won't go Dude, to I think game. they could play McNeese, and I think they'd still— yeah. Well, I mean, the point is, like, <laughs> every college kid is going to have a ticket available to them. All their friends are yeah, going to have to— Yeah, yeah. It's going to be full. It may not be with who's normally sitting there. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually be very interested yeah. to see if it's a full stadium, because I don't think it will be. But nevertheless, Southern Miss— Decent group of five team. I wouldn't be surprised if that's interesting for a half. I mean, What's Ford, the line on that one? Uh, I'd have to pull it up. Oh, okay. Um, I thought you had it. Don't worry about it. No, I'll look. But uh, look, Florida State, I think, will take care of business. And by the way, the ACC right now, after what Clemson did on Monday night, yeah, Florida State may steamroll that conference. May steamroll. I had this thought watching that Clemson-Duke game of the genius of the SEC is there's enough room for multiple good teams. Is there just not that? with the ACC like is does it have to be Clemson or does it have to be Florida State or does it have to be like has there been a time where there's been two elite teams in ACC history not very often when well, it's Florida been a while State was on there when they were like on the top with Jameis right Clemson was like coming ascending, up. yep and, and they then were they good, flipped but they weren't yep. they weren't what they were gonna be what yeah, because um, ACC would be great if Clemson was the Clemson of a couple years ago. Yeah, like I mean, now, it'd be amazing. You'd, what do you you'd think? be like, damn, man, there's two teams right. in this conference that can make the playoffs. What yeah. do you think the line is? Florida State. I'm going to go with like 31. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. No way. 31. Yeah. Which surprised Let's go. me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe you ought to do that for a living. That was incredible. <laughs> um, but yeah, 31 point favorite. I would take Southern Miss in 31. For whatever that's worth, uh, but give me the F- give me FSU. No, I, I want, I want FSU. Yeah, give me right. FSU. No, we'll save the tape. I don't want, the line would have had to be fifty six. That offense to say. is too good. They're going to score yeah. a lot. Of no, points. I, they're better. The, 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 I mean, you, man, they're having fun too. That's the thing. Like, if you're a football team and an offense that's having fun, trying to put up numbers, trying to win awards. Like, I know these are individual awards, but now all of a sudden that Southern Miss game, like, it's not boring. Like, we're having a blast doing this. We don't want to be stopped. We don't want to stop this train. From going, I don't care who's standing in the way. So I just I don't see anybody stopping Florida State. Well, yeah, State I mean, if it. Florida State wins 45-17, nobody will think anything of it, but they don't cover the 31-point spread, I guess is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. So, but I'm we'll not see betting on it. So. No, yeah, I'm not either, but that that's just where I'm at. All right, let's go with the SEC schedule tomorrow night, or tomorrow actually, 11 a.m., Vanderbilt, Wake Forest. Vandy wins, they're 3-0. and That's something, right? Little conference bragging rights on the line. Man, Wake Forest has has done an amazing. I mean, we're turning this into ACC hour, but the reality is that has Wake Forest been top twenty five last three years. Definitely the last two years. Yeah, probably the last three. I mean, they have quietly like Lachlan Hewlett, who is a quarterback here at St. Augustine. Oh, he was so good against Bowles. He's a unbelievable. Weeks ago. He's yeah. committed to Wake, and I know Locke and his dad Will and I work together, and one of the elite trainers of the in the world. But he he like. That wasn't even a question. Like, I want to go to Wake. Right? They are doing a really good job recruiting, coaching them up. They've always executing. done well in Jacksonville. They have. Yeah. They have. So, I mean, if you're right. If Vandy finds a way to beat Wake tomorrow, then, yeah, I think they're, they're somebody that's not an instant win on your schedule for sure. Now, Vandy looking to go to 3-0. and They play Wake Forest 11 a.m. tomorrow on the ACC Network. Georgia hosts Ball State. That's a name your score, right? I hope so. I mean, I, I I hope to see Georgia open it up a little bit. That's not like a offensive coordinator type of thing. That's just uh, get all your weapons healthy. Let's see what what this is all going to look like because they've got a lot of weapons. Um, but I, I think you see a little bit of that tomorrow. Top twenty five battle three thirty ESPN two Ole Miss and Tulane tomorrow. That's an interesting game. Again, I'm from that area of the country. Um, that there that Tulane thing. In other parts of the country, Tulane's just what what is Tulane, right? But in that area, Tulane's a big deal. Like there's LSU, there's Tulane, and then there's LSU Ole Miss and all that and LSU Arkansas. Right. So I think that whole that's an interesting game that I know when Ole Miss scheduled that they didn't think it was going to come to this. So Michael Pratt is a baller now. Yeah. Like that could be a fun game to watch. What time is that? That's three thirty. I'm ESPN locked in. Two. I'm locked into that one. And three thirty ABC, probably the game of the day in the conference. Texas A and M goes to Miami. Uh, that seems the, like it's a, not the game of the day in the conference. That's Alabama Texas. Oh, Alabama Texas, yeah. right? But A and yeah, is, there, is it, Alabama? With Alabama Texas, people might be expecting a route there. A and M Miami. I get what you're saying. They're two more high profile teams, but that seems like a big game for Jimbo at College Station. 
It seems like a big game for Cristobal in South Florida. Yeah, I don't think there's a game that you could set up nationally where it's two teams that you'd have no idea who they are or what they are more than this one, right? I mean, this is – remember a year ago, A&M was just coming off of one of the greatest recruiting classes ever, and everybody was talking about, oh, Jimbo's made it, and Jimbo's about to compete, and then they got their butt kicked by App State and a couple other people – and then people started transferring out, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, I, I think this game says a lot for both programs. And I think, yeah, no, I agree. It's going to tell you where they are. Mario needs it. Jimbo needs it. That's a big one tomorrow in South Florida. Jimbo needs it more. Yeah, I agree, because right? Jimbo's obviously further along. Yeah, yeah. there's greater expectations right now at Texas A&M. I think the people in Miami are bought into Cristobal being there for a while. I think this is a critical game for Jimbo. You mentioned Texas and Alabama in Tuscaloosa tomorrow night. The Longhorns have a shot in that one. Yeah, yeah, I think they do. I mean, I, I'm I'm excited to watch that game because I'm excited to see what Quinn Ewers has become. He's the guy that everybody knew about that you haven't really heard much about since he went to Ohio State. Um, he's a really talented guy, so I'm ex I'm excited to see what he's able to do tomorrow night with full command of this offense. I completely sold on my Quinn Ewers stock when he shaved the mullet. Yeah. Quinn, you were stock totally. What are you doing? That's, that's, that's your thing. That's your identity. That's your thing. See, it's like here's Trevor this, Lawrence shaving here, his head. Here's his chance to, to form a new identity that's actually football. No, though. no, no, no. You're the out. Mo, huh? The mullet you're is out. there. You're the quarterback of Texas, and you have a God, mullet. So much vanity. Come how on. is uh, how is that working out with Arch Manning? Like, what's the deal there with yours and and Manning? Is he redshirting this year? I, I mean, you don't have to make that decision now. You know, I mean, you get the four games because yours have how many years of eligibility left. I think he's got three, but I would imagine, and I don't know this, but I would imagine the thought is to come out this year. To come out. Oh, so he can come out this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't know if he was three years removed from high school. Yeah, already. this is his third. Okay. Yep. All right. So that he makes had, sense. He now. had the first year at Ohio State, last year's his first right. year at Texas, and then this year. Yep. All right. And then what's left of the Pac 12, the final year of it, it appears. A little interesting back and forth with the SEC tomorrow. First, Arizona, uh, Arizona the Wildcats go to Starkville to play Mississippi State. I like both of these games we're about to talk about. Like, I think this is the way. And, and Florida and Utah, when it was scheduled, may have been like this. I love this whole West Coast SEC thing that we've got going on because I don't get to watch much of these. I don't know what Arizona has, but I'll watch it. We, we work with Will Rogers, and, and Will's a great dude, and I love to watch him play at Mississippi State, so I'll get to watch this game. I'm excited for that, and I'm really excited for the next one you're about yeah, to talk Auburn about. Yeah, Auburn makes a trip to Cal. I would imagine – this will be Auburn's first game out there since the national title game where they lost to Florida State, at least in the state of California. Right. So they go to Cal to play the Golden Bears. The Tigers are a six-and-a-half-point favorite on the road. Yeah, we uh, we also work with Auburn's quarterbacks, uh, two of them. Um, and I so I watched that game last week, and Peyton Thorne played really well. But it's obvious that Hugh Freeze has kind of this curveball thing going on um, with Robbie Ashford, the backup quarterback, right? And so I'm interested to see as the year develops how that goes as well. And I think I think Cal will provide just enough resistance to where you can't be, I'm kind of air quoting careless, not saying that they were careless before, but you got to be a little bit more strategic than you had to be last week with this whole switching quarterbacks thing. So I'm really interested to see how that turns out as well. You know, final thought. We all know in the SEC it just means more, right? Although it didn't mean more last week. Right. With Utah beating Florida, obviously LSU losing to Florida State, North Carolina beating South Carolina. It was not a great opening weekend for the SEC. These non-conference games from a conference point of view for the rest of the year, they're important. I mean, Vandy and Wake Forest, whatever, but Ole Miss, Tulane, A&M, Miami, Texas, Alabama, uh, we just mentioned uh, Arizona, Mississippi State, and then finally Auburn and Cal. SEC needs to have a good showing tomorrow. Or people are going to start talking about them. Yeah, I was thinking about this last week. Like, if you're a college football guy like we all are, you really better enjoy this year because the landscape's changing so much that I don't know that the whole conference it just means more thing is even going to be a thing in three years because there's only going to be a couple conferences and they're all going to be really big deals. Right, I mean, even Alabama, Texas, that's that's an SEC game. Yeah, that'll be a conference game. Right, that's a year. conference game. So it's it's, I I think like some of the rivalries and some of the the rarities like you're seeing here to where it's like, oh gosh, Pac-12, SEC, enjoy that because it's going away. But you're right. I mean, it the the 
the SEC needs to have a couple of statement wins because the goal with the SEC is always the same, to get two in the college football playoff, right? That's the goal. And you don't, you don't get that if your conference as a whole isn't very good. Next Friday, we'll be here to recap McNeese State. <laughs> there you go. And Florida. And then Tennessee. Tennessee's next week for the Gators. You're right into conference play, Is man. It? Tennessee and Florida next week, 7 o'clock in the swamp, a week from tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you better, whatever you need to fix, you better fix it tomorrow because the volunteers are coming in, and and, and we know they haven't won in Gainesville in forever. They're going to be fired hey, up, man. But what an opportunity for Florida. But you yeah. want to get everybody to stop talking about Utah, beat Tennessee. And if you're if you're in Jacksonville watching the game, just – Watch your your front door and your house from getting hit by footballs that Joe Milton will throw. Yeah, yeah. from from the field. I've never seen somebody throw it's a football further. It's, it's unbelievable. Insane. He's. Yeah. I, I remember watching him at some Under Armour camps when I was covering recruiting. He is a stud, and we'll see what happens. Tennessee's got a tune up tomorrow. They play Austin P, so they will be highly ranked two and zero coming in to the swamp next week. And we'll talk about it next Friday. Gator bites ten ten XL dot com and the Florida Gator. 1010XL Facebook page for Graham Marsh and Denny Thompson. I'm the hacker Ryan Green. Have a great week. We'll be back in seven days.